Hello again. So this is question five from set problem five, and we have this following circuit. So we have to first perform a DC analysis and then find the crescent point VDS and ID, VDS Q and ID Q. For part B, we have to draw the small signal circuit and calculate the transconductance and the output resistance, and also derive the expressions and compute the values of the input resistance, output resistance, and the overall voltage gain V out over Vs. Okay, so let's start with part A. So for part A, we have to perform a DC analysis. And for DC analysis, remember that the capacitors, they become a sh uh, an open circuit. So we are left only with VDD, six volts, BEE minus four volts, the resistor R1, R2, RD and RS, and then the BJT, the, sorry, the MOSFET itself. Okay, and now if we look at the at the gate of this uh, transistor, you we would see that we have a circuit that looks like this. So we have VDD here, right? Then we have R1. Then here we have the gate, right? We have R2. And then we also have the EE down here. Right, so this is basically the circuit that we have connected at the gate of the transistor, and this is our voltage Vg. Right now, to calculate this voltage, we can first figure out what's the value of the current that's flowing in this circuit. So, if you want, we can calculate the current, which is going to be just Vdd minus Vee divided by R1 plus R2. Right, and then to figure out what's the voltage Vg here, we know that Vg in this case it's going to be equals to this current times R2 plus VEE, so it's going to be VDD minus VEE times R2, right, divided by R1 plus R2 plus VEE, right. Now, if we substitute the values of VDD as 6 volts, the value of VEE as minus 4, R1 and R2 as 20K and 30K respectively, then we get that VG, the gate voltage, is equals to 2 volts. So that's the voltage that we have at the gate. Now, VGS... If we look at the circuit, we have VB here, right? And then we have ID flowing here through RS. IS, which is the same as the, the, the drain current. And then we also have VEE down there. So the overall VGS can be calculated as VG minus Vs, and then Vs is the drain current times the source resistance uh, plus Vee, right? And then we can also calculate Vgs minus Vt, which is the term that we use to calculate ID in the saturation condition, right? So this is going to be all this term here right? Vg minus Id times Rs plus Vee minus Vt. And then if we calculate this one, we get 5 volts minus 2 times Id, okay? And again, we are using currents in milliampers and resistors or resistances in kilo ohms okay so then we get voltages in volts okay so remember this one here so that's why we have just two times id not 2k okay but this is five volts and this is 2k then 2k times the current that we would calculate id in medium peers they are all in the same unit okay but this just simplifies the quadratic formula once we are done with that so remember that that for saturation operation we have that the drain current is one half, right, times the 
transconductance Kn, right, in milli amperes per volt squared, right, times uh, Vgs minus Vt. Now we know that we have one half here times the process trans the the sorry the transistor transconductance. It's 400 microamperes per volt squared. So this is, means that we have 0 0.4 milliamperes per volt squared times VGS minus VT, which is this term up here, which is five minus two times ID squared. Okay. So if we expand this equation here and then equate the quadratic uh, term ID, the linear term for ID and the constant uh, C, we get an equation that it's four times ID squared minus 25 times ID plus 25 equals to zero. And then if we solve this quadratic formula, we get that ID is either five milliamperes or 1.5 milliamperes, right? But the thing is that 1.25 actually gives us uh, VDS greater than the overdrive voltage, which is like mandatory for saturation operation, right? So we are going to pick this ID here, okay? Now from this value of ID, so this is IDQ, this is the first answer, right? Now we can calculate VGS, so VGS is going to be VG minus IDRS minus VEE. Right, and this is equals to 3.5 volts. We have VG plus 2 volts. We have ID 1.25 million peers, RS 2K, and minus VEE, VEE is minus 4, right? So this gives us 3.5 volts. We can calculate VD, right? So VD in this case is just VDD minus ID times RD. And this is also equals to 3.5 volts. And then we can calculate Vs. So Vs in this case is Rs times ID plus VEE. And this gives us minus 1.5 volts. So overall Vds, which is Vd minus Vs, is equals to 3.5 minus minus 1.5, which is 5 volts. And then we see that VDS, okay, which is equals to 5 volts, it's greater than the overdrive voltage. So the overdrive voltage is equals to VGS minus VT. So the overdrive voltage, V overdrive, gives us VGS is 3.5 minus one volt is 2.5 volts. And then five, it's greater than 2.5. So this condition here gives us that the MOSFET is actually operating in the saturation condition. And that's our second point for a decrease in point VDS. So it's 1.25 million peers and five, five volts. Now for part B, we have to draw the small signal circuit, right? So I just want to remind you that for small signal analysis, all the capacitors, they become a short circuit, right? So then the DC voltage is here. They also become a short circuit. So this one goes to the ground. This one actually goes to the ground too, okay? So We are just, you just need to replace this MOSFET here by its small signal circuit. Now, how does that become? Um, we have the voltage source, the small signal source here. Then we have its small signal resistance, RS equals to 1K ohm, right? And then R1 and R2, they are go directly to the ground because we short circuit the, the DC voltage sources, VDD and VEE. So this is R1, this is R2. This one here is 20K, this one is 30K, 
And then here we have the gate, right? So this mouse signal for for the MOSFET, we have the gate here, then we have the serves here, right? And because we have that capacitor that bypasses the, the serves uh, resistance, so here's the serves, it goes directly to the ground. Then we have a current serves here, right? That goes to the drain here. Now in parallel with the current source, and this is GM VGS, and this is VGS, we have a resistor here that's the out small output resistance. And then here we have connected to the ground, the drain resistance. And then here we have the load resistance, and this is our V out, right? So this is 10K. The drain resistance is 2K. And that's it, right? We just need to figure out what's the value of GM. So the transconductance is two times ID from the DC bias analysis divided by the overdrive voltage, which is VGS minus VT. Now this one here gives us 0 0.001 ampere per volt, right? <clears throat> and the output resistance, it is the early voltage divided by the drain current, which in this case gives us 80K. Cool. So this is the parameters that we have for this circuit. Now. For part C, we have to figure out what's the input resistance, Ri, seen from this terminal, and the output resistance seen from this terminal here. Okay, so if you look at the input resistance, we have, so for part C, we have that the input resistance is just the parallel between R1 and R2, right? They're connected directly to the ground. So it's R1 in parallel with R2. And this gives us 12k ohm. For the output resistance, we have just so if this current GM VGS here is zero, then we are left with R out, small signal R out in parallel with the drain resistance. And this is 1.9512 k ohm. Okay. Now for the overall voltage gain, let's first calculate the AV1, which is the input gain here. So for the input gain, we have that VGS, which is our like our input here. It's going to be the voltage across this uh, input resistance, right? Which is the parallel between R1 and R2, right? Divided by our, uh, the input resistance times RS. So it's a voltage divider, right, from VS to the voltage that part of Vs that's been applied to the parallel between R1 and R2, which is the input resistance, okay? So in this case, AV1 is going to be just um, the input resistance divided by the input resistance plus the source resistance, okay? And this gives us again that 0 0.8571 volt per volt. For the output, um, for, the, for the second gain here, AV2, so this gain, it's, it's equivalent to VI over VS, okay? And this gain V2 here, it's V out over VI, where VI in this case is the, the input voltage here, which is the voltage that we are actually using as input, which is VG, VGS, okay? So in this case here, if you look at the circuit the way it is, we have this current flowing here, right? Which is GM VGS. And that current is actually flowing, part of that current is flowing here over R out, here over RD, and here over RL, right? So we have like an equivalent resistance between R out, RD, and RL, and that current is flowing like through that equivalent resistance. But because the direction of the current GM, VGS here goes in the opposite direction assigned by the polarity of the output voltage, 
then it means that the output voltage would be equals to minus gm vgs okay times the parallel between rd rl and r out okay so if we isolate v out over vgs which is the same as v out over vi right because it's just like a different way to call vgs it's just our input voltage which is the voltage red here here so this means that this gain here av2 is equals to minus gm times the parallel rd rl r out okay so let's go back here so this is the same as minus gm rd rl r out and this for the value of rl equals to 10k rd equals to 2k and r out equals to 80k gives us a gain times the transconductance right 0 0.001 this gives us a gain of minus 1.3994 volt per volt okay now the overall voltage gain av which is v out over the source uh, voltage is the same as av1 okay times av2 which is this value here minus 1.39 times 0 0.8571 so, well, I think I got the wrong value here. So this one here, it should be minus 1.6327. And then the overall voltage gain is minus 1.3994 volt per volt. Okay. So that's the final answer for this, for problem five.